Saw we had one last minute addition to the agenda and one depressingly uh, deletion from the agenda. Um, but hopefully, you had a chance to look at those. Uh, start with consent agenda. Does anybody have anything that they want pulled before we make a motion? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll <laughs> second. So um, maybe, maybe just a quick uh, why we have a PT and OT and all of a sudden, not specifically to, but why that ends up in the consent agenda or well, ends up on our agenda. Sure. So um, when a student is placed as a resident in Cardinal Hayes, um, they become a Millbrook resident for purposes of educational programming. Um, so we need to provide that. In order for this student to be able to attend certain programs, they need services um, and therefore we may need to do a program search to find an appropriate placement, but in the interim, we have to provide their related services um, and home instruction until we can find an appropriate placement for which we can provide their educational services. So, and we're, we sort of pay the bill, but then we get reimbursed from them, right? That's correct. Okay. Not from them, we get reimbursed, well, yeah. yeah. So how does that, Kevin, do you know where, how that works from a budgetary standpoint? Like where does it come out of and where does it go into, or do we have to just take it out, like move it from a, uh, one of the funds? Well, typically we come out of the 2250 category, which is students with disabilities and those types of services. And it may qualify for some additional aid from the state, um, like excess cost, depending on what the cost is. And then that goes basically back into the same account. What well, no, it doesn't go into the account. We're talking about revenues and expenditures. So right. the revenues offset the expenditures are it's part of the budget process. Okay. So money would be uh, state aid would be uh, earned and typically reimbursed like the following year. All right, thank you. Any any other comments or questions or General questions. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to uh, speak about the board retreat. Um, yeah, I don't think I really have anything uh, more to say since since our last meeting. Howard, did you have anything you wanted to go through? No. Uh, Laura? Yep, great. Good evening, everybody. Nice to see you all. A couple of shout outs. Uh, early this year, the Millbrook Music Department applied for the National Association of Music Merchants Award that recognizes best communities for music education. And I'm happy to share that our music program will once again be recognized for 2022. So thank you to our music teachers for your commitment and leadership and all of our student performers. Bravo, round of applause. Blood Drive, sponsored by the Interact Club. This, they set a goal of 35 people. They surpassed their goal with a total of 43 people donating, resulting in 47 pints of blood. Well done. Um, some people donated the double red cells, so we're glad to exceed our goal once again. And congratulations to our high school student, Madeline Marchand, for having her work selected for the Real Exposure International Teen Film and Photography Festival. And that's hosted by The Art Effect. Real Exposure Film and Photo Festivals features photography and youth-produced 
short films, animations, documentaries, dramas, horror, and comedies created by talented young artists from across the world. And Maddie was, she has three pieces selected. So there will be an opening reception from five to seven on May 4th, and the work will be on display until June 19th. Now, if she does any of that at the Can Festival, I'll volunteer <laughs> just to check that out. Okay. Just, we'll make sure I'm you're on the list. The yeah. <laughs> guest list. That's very cool, though. That mm -hmm. is very cool. Some things in district ELM numbers. At this time, we have 33 pre K students fully registered, and we have 42 kindergartner students fully registered. And we also know a few families who are in the process of registering their, their children. So good numbers. Mm -hmm. Summer meal program, Congress has not extended the US Department of Agriculture's USDA authority to issue nationwide waivers as it has done in the past two years during pandemic. And as a result, we don't qualify geographically. So based on recommendation from our school food manager and just geographically and enrollment and numbers and criteria, um, we're not recommending having a summer food service program. Are there any questions about that? Do you know what the impact of that is? I mean, I mean I, I'm, there's there's people that I guess need the food, and then there's people that go hungry if they don't have food. Is I mean, have we thought this through and, and made sure that we're not putting any of our kids at risk? I want to say that there are 35 families, but I'm going to check my my facts. And then we're also in the process of identifying local programs that we can share with our families. We, we had a program before, right? Like um, you apply to get um, free, like reduced meal, right? We had that before. So do we continue to have that? During the school year. During the school year. Oh, yes. During the school yes. year for free and reduced. <clears throat> yes. Do we know the actual cost of the summertime program? Probably. Um, I don't know, Peggy, you know, I think we can find that out though. It's a good question, Chris. There are other uh, public locations and other programs that they can be referred to. If the government's not going to reimburse us for not only cost of food, but cost of uh, employees, lighting, and everything, and everything that goes along with it, uh, it may be a burden on taxpayers as a whole. Uh, but the 35 families, it's important that they do get referred to other locations for the food. Maybe, I mean, I don't, I, there's no way we can, I, I, as Howard said, there's no way we can just put the bill. But we, are, we also need to make sure that we understand if, there's, if there are people, families, kids that are seriously at risk. Mm -hmm. And then see what we can do, you know, work with the county, the state, the whoever. Um, like to hand them off smoothly, not just say, no, we're not yeah. doing it. That yeah. way we make sure that it's a smooth transition for them to get the available uh, resources from, uh, from other agencies. Does that mean it won't be free in the fall, the school year, or is that negative? So it's just stopped altogether? That's what we're thinking, yeah, right now they just, the, the only announcement I know of right now is the summer one. Okay. Record saying that no, it would be for the qualify for the, for the free reduced. Right. It would right. still be available in the fall. But it's not for everyone. So that makes it important for folks yeah. that need to fill out that application not yeah. to forget to do so. Yeah, right now it's every student who's 18 yeah. and under. Now, so how, I will come to you. How are we letting like the Congress? Yeah. State Senators, Schumer, uh, but how, how are we making sure that those, especially, well, I guess that everybody realizes yeah. that come the fall, it's not there anymore. Um, because what we, want, what we don't want to do is have, uh, have the, like suddenly they're, they're just assuming that it's going to, that program's got to be there. And then it's not. Right. Um, so we should really make sure we understand or not understand, but have a plan for telling them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last piece was just sharing some of the things that we're doing 
um, for the community in mean, educating and informing about um, suicide prevention, DASA, um, drug and alcohol, bullying, and uh, you know, Caroline has been constructing a family university. Yeah, so um, thank, thank you to the Inesity team. They help with this as well. Um, Victoria has reached out to some folks in the community. So um, Glisten was not able to provide anyone until next year. So we'll look to do programming with them for next year. Um, but we will be working with the Judges County Pride Center to provide um, information both to students and at a family university for parents as well. Um, we'll also be working with CAPE, which is the Judges County Council for Addiction Prevention and Education. <laughs> Um, so they will be doing um, on a night different than Family University because they're not able to make it that night. They'll be doing a presentation called Blind Spots, which is for parents about risk behaviors. Um, both the middle and high school are um, in contact with the Grace Smith House um, to bring Kim Dangerfield in. She works with schools um, on anti-bullying. So they're both planning for that. Um, Kim Dangerfield will also be at Family University. And James's Warriors, uh, Donna Thomas, she presented a pretty, um, a pretty, I would say, thought provoking um, assembly to our secondary students. So she'll be returning for Family University as well. And then we will have Beth Harris here to answer any questions for the community about DASA. So that will be on May 19th. May 19th. So you went the it's not in budget vote. Okay. It's a Thursday night. Just lastly, I put in my um, weekly before um, this meeting the idea of a student representative during board meetings. And I didn't know if the board ever considered that or there was a student who was ever sat um, at the table with us. I've been going to neighboring school districts and it varies. And um, there are students sitting at the table talking about um, their perspective of school, the highlights of school, um, challenges of school and being the voice of, of students throughout the district. And so I didn't know if that was ever a conversation in the past. I believe we tried it. Um, I think it was before I joined the board. Um, I think <laughs> we tried it and basically fizzled out. Um, you know, people showed up at a meeting and then, uh, and then little by little just uh, drifted away. But to me, it's a good idea. I mean, it, it, at least give them an idea of what goes on. Um, I don't know. Well, you know what's nice, Laura? It gives a student perspective, but we do it at Tucko and we do it with two students. We try to do juniors and seniors um, and they, they are guided by the guidance counselors and one administrator who's myself and we sort of structure it for them. So one does student activities in clubs and after school programs and the other student does um, all the athletic programs for the season. So tonight we have two students reporting on the progress of the spring sports so far. They write something out, they take the lead, but they run it by um, the, the counselors. And then our superintendent or assistant soup meets with them and just, you know, says it's good to go. You make sure they're not going to say anything, you know, inappropriate, but it's sort of really, um, you know, structured. And if there's a, a topic that comes up, they're also able to, you know, um, add their input. And we usually have them stay for this, the whole meeting. They come in the beginning, they give their report, and then they, they had sports all day or if they want to go home to study. We let them go. So it's been working really well. We're on our third year doing it. Do you know how the students are chosen? Selected. We ask coaches, um, teachers, and, you know, a lot of times, you know, it, you, you want to make sure you're being all inclusive. So you just don't want to take all the captains, you know. So um, guidance plays a big part in that. The, the guidance counselors know who's who. They know who's going to what schools. And, and like I said, we started with seniors a couple of years ago and have gone to juniors and seniors because it's really, it's an outstanding, you know, 11th graders as well. Um, and sometimes, like I said, we had one kid who was physically challenged, transferred over my own a prep 
and just the work that he does and he doesn't, he just keeps going and going. And, and uh, you know, he, he was a kid that we selected that did a great job, you know? Um, so it, it's, you know, you try to make it where it, it's very inclusive, you know? All the new, new kids every meeting? Yes. So it's 24 kids throughout the year or, you know, 20 during the school year. We don't really do it over the summer. So, I mean, uh, we just happen to break it down into those two categories. We, you could structure however Laura and Caroline and, and, and the cabinet and the principals thought might be a good idea, you know. Happens to be athletics is big in every school, you know what I mean? But in Tucko, it's huge. So everybody likes to hear that report, how we're doing, what the teams are doing. We started a modified lacrosse program. They're talking about that, you know, and, and how everybody did over the Easter break, what games we played. And they give like an update. Instead of the superintendent having to do it, they do part of what, you know, the assistant super, super athletic director might do every month uh, in our case. But we have a lot of clubs too. We, we started some clubs down there new this year. And, you know, um, they, they talk a lot about that too. Habitat for Humanity, doing it house bills and things like that. But it's just a way to structure it. Just a sec- I, I, I love it. I, I think it's a great idea, Laura. I also remember reading, uh, this is probably a couple of years ago in the NISBA uh, newspaper, that some districts uh, took the elected offices, I guess the president, vice president, and uh, the beast, or, and treasurer, and they rotate the school elected, since they're elected from the student body themselves, instead of any favoritism mm-hmm. being picked. So, you know, you, know, you, know, you could do that through, through student government too, Howard. That's a great idea. You're correct. Does anybody on the board have a problem if we at least get moved forward on it? I think that's a great idea. Okay. No, we'll set it up. We can set it up for fall. Mm-hmm. So, summer or fall. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, Carolyn, did you have anything else you want to do? I don't have at this meeting. Um, I gave more of the team and then I have my reports for the state. Okay. All right. So next, uh, Victoria. Hi, everyone. Um, so some updates on state reporting. Now is the time for end of year reporting. There's about 70 some odd surge reports. So um, those are beginning. There's a meeting that's happening in here with the Mid-Hudson RIC uh, Regional Information Center to help out with that, the parameters of that. There's also a great piece of software that Elliot has secured for the districts called Certify. <laughs> um, and it provides us with a way to, to like clean underneath the data. So although everything is looking error-free and happy in level zero, one and two, there are some like complications that, that do arise that the machines don't catch. Um, and of course, you know, the things catching would be quite tedious. So thank you for that. And we've been going through that and working with um, the school tool uh, folks from the RIC. And so that's all underway. Um, and then with regards to that too, we have all the pre-K reporting. So I, I believe I mentioned in another meeting, pre-K is a whole, a separate stream of reports for the state very, very seriously. So that's happening at the same time. Um, so that's the over under on state data. Um, for our internal uh, data work, uh, we have the end of year ISL diagnostic snapshot, which is brilliant. So it's our P12 look at math and literacy. Um, so that'll be the third probe that we do for our students. Um, the district data team is going to meet in the summer. And one of the things we'll be looking at is that we, the end of year, but we'll also be looking at the beginning of year, middle of year. Uh, in addition, we'll look at regions data, three through eight testing data, suspension data. And I put here too um, on the report, the SSEC. So we say SEC, that is the old DASA and Vader combined. And SSEC stands for uh, safety and educational climate. So all that information will be there um, for us in the summer to review as well. Um, and then switching gears into professional development, we have um, P5 teachers engaging in conversations about around rubrics and writing uh, ass- and designing assessments. So a component um, of teachers college work that we do is um, they're called on demands. It's not like the, the gentlest name for them, but it's basically a pre and a post assessment for each unit. 
uh, um, and Devin Adney and myself and Ali Soriano went to the spring Saturday reunion. And so it was wonderful. And Devin and I just ad hoc met up in one of the sessions, which was around using these free assessments. And the facilitator gave like a structure for doing so. So Devin and I are now collaborating and making what will be a nice protocol for P5 in those free assessments. A little wordy, but we're very uh, excited about that work in writing uh, P5. Um, so other than that, uh, pre-K program is still being developed in a curricular sense. Uh, an exciting piece of that is uh, their report card runs off of their data tracker. So they're all um, grades uh, P5 have data trackers. PK is aligned to all the PK standards from New York State. So teachers use it as a grade book and I built it so they basically, well, I press the button, but I press a button and it generates all the report cards from parents, standard aligned. So it's beautiful, seamless. <coughs> I'd love to share it with anyone who's interested in learning more about that. Um, and uh, the flip side or the ad for next year is we're developing a holistic play rubric. So play is a huge part of pre-K, right? We, and NK, and, and I guess all of them. Uh, but we want to look at it thoughtfully because that's what the teachers are teaching. So we realized that we need to look at like developmental um, uh, look fors and then teach in twos. So we'll be um, developing the rubric out and then putting that on the tracker as well. So it's really exciting. Um, the team, Ali Soriano, Sam Kell, and Mike Cicero um, are all in on that. And we're also going to be using it during the screeners. So it should be great. Um, seventh grade ELA residency is underway. And right now the students are working on their short stories um, that are modeled after the style of the author that we have read together. Um, and then after that, we're gonna be reading some short texts that kind of deal with the same theme coming of age in um, difficult uh, places. So I think most of the settings that we're in war, so World War II, um, and we're also looking at just like hard times for kids the same age as kids. So it's really nice. Uh, we're developing STEAM and some parameters around what we hope and dream STEAM to look like in P5. Um, another big moment is Eureka Math is set to be piloted in many of our classrooms for next school year. Um, teachers went to a professional development session during the last year independent conference day. Um, and we're pivoting that as an admin team to develop a P12, but really district-wide conversation around mathematics. Like just to state, just to see, um, doing some perceptual data, I hope to get that and prepare it for the board so that you can look it will be anonymous so far as like, we won't say who said what, but it'll just give a sense of like, what is the teaching and learning like in mathematics in our district? So we're very excited about that. And um, the principals and I have been working um, in Caroline with just to make, like, formulate questions that will really get to the heart of what we're after. And the last piece that I want to bring up was is Data Lab. Um, so, Data Lab is a structure for professional learning communities. So just for a way that groups speak to each other um, and you can talk about anything right in a group, but what makes Data Lab special is that you take um, uh, what we call warm data or like the emotional status of an individual throughout three points throughout, <laughs> and then you present it on a screen so that people can see. But it's an, again, anonymous. You can kind of see like, how am I? Am I grumpy? Is everyone grumpy? Am I cool? Is everyone cool? And then you can build that out over time. Um, and, and one of the, it's simple spreadsheet work, but I run it through Google Data Studio so that you could actually see it over time. So we test kitchen this at Elm. I think the teachers really liked it. Um, and it was certainly fun. And, um, you know, we got some good laughs over, you know, where people were. I think we're just kind of testing the tool out. So, yeah, it's really fun. So when kids get transferred to us or we transfer them or they go to another district, another state, whatever, does their data go with them? Like, I mean, if we get a fifth grader, do we see all of the, you know, grades one through four, not just, you know, their math grades, but where they're weak, where they're and, and behavioral data, all that good stuff. Does that come to us? So it does not. 
Um, so when someone transfers to us, it would be on the registrar of any district to take all the data. But what you can do is you, you can request records from the school that they're coming from. And of course, they will give you report cards and such, but it might not, it's not a have to. The, the only things that you can get from the state, because it's all, every child has one number, kind of like your social security number, but it's their ID number from the state. In the nicest queue, you can look them up and you can see where they've been to school and where they've been enrolled. It doesn't even have program specifics and it definitely does not have grades. And there's yeah. just no way to do, I mean, I, you know, pre-Ks, if we get them when they come in pre-K, you know, they're kind of fret. But if we, a, a student transfers in in 10th grade, you'd want to know, are they reading it without, you know, starting out the first month, you know, doing testing and testing and testing to see where they're reading, where their math is. Um, I mean, it's, have we ever, like, broached the subject with, with SED or with, uh, I mean, it, it, Trouble is that half the time the data isn't correct anyway. But yeah, but it would be, you know, and and as long as we're willing to hand our data to them, you know, our, one of our students transfers to I don't know someplace. Um, it would seem like yeah, it's a pretty simple thing to do. Uh, you know, maybe not all the details going to be there. Maybe maybe they don't have a course that we have. We don't have a course they yeah, have. That does happen. They don't transfer. Sometimes it doesn't transfer, you know, comparing apples to apples. Um, typically speaking, it's going to depend where the student <coughs> is coming from, the quality of the packet that we get. Um, unfortunately, there are some cases that we spend a lot of time just trying to get basic information as to like what grade the student should be placed in, what classes they've taken, what their grades are, so that, I mean, even mid year. Sometimes we struggle to get a report card from some places. And then other places you call and you have the information, you know, faxed to you in no time. So sometimes it can be challenging. Um, and there's also part of the educational record that the parent needs to specifically um, consent to being shared to. Mm -hmm. And is that usually an issue or? Not usually, Not usually. but sometimes they don't want to share that information. And who would make, like, who would, who would it be SED or who would make that decision that, you know, we just received this student, the student has, I don't know, had great, great math, terrible English, great social studies, if that's even still a thing, um, but they also have several behavioral things, they also have, you know, and who would make that decision that says, the state needs to have a hub where all that stuff is basically pumped and available for us. I mean, if that's the way they decide to architect. <laughs> is it as a kid? It's not NISBA. It's, they're just sort of... Yeah. State Ed would decide if that was something that they were going to undertake. I mean, I think just thinking about the magnitude of a program like that, um, being able to staff it and keep it up to date, I mean, we don't have time for lags in this information, right? Because at some point when the student registers and they have to be placed within a program within a couple of days. So they're there on your doorstep and to wait for information to get from the state portal would probably be even more challenging than working with the, directly with the program that they're coming from. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it just seems like in this day and age, you know, if I move from Dutchess County to Columbia County, it'd be nice, but my driving record stays with me. Right. You know, they don't go, oh, well, he has no speeding tickets, no this, no that, you know, because he moved to Columbia County. Um, it, it would seem like in this day and age, this would be something simple to do. Uh, I do know, I realize our data, the data that we get from them is usually a year old, but it would be interesting to have a conversation with somebody at SED grades don't automatically for like high school you have transfer grade high school so that doesn't automatically come with them it should be like a doctor you know you sign yeah. a form and then yeah but you can get yeah, like you is. said like the same transfers in <laughs> yeah. you have like 10 minutes signs are like that and depending on where they're coming from um they may be working off of units we work off mm -hmm. of credits they may be working like not every state has the same requirements for graduation not mm -hmm. so 
in theory, it's all supposed to work very smoothly, but in reality, it doesn't. How how often have we had that? Like I I would just I would just assume, and I could be that like you know you're gonna move. I'm gonna move to Florida. I'm gonna wait till my daughter's done with school, and then I'm gonna move. Right? But I know it doesn't always happen. But how often do we get somebody in in the middle of the year or during the school year? Is it a lot or? I mean, it's enough where we had to evaluate transfers where we had to call other programs and figure out what it is that they are grading on. Um, we've had kids come in with like quarter credits and, you know, we're trying to piece together. So, yeah, I mean, it can be challenging. And what's more challenging is that depending on when a student enters, they may still have to pass New York State Regents for graduation even though they've never taken the courses that would prepare them for it because they weren't required in their, you know, previous state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there can, I mean, there can just be challenges like that, right? New York State says if they come in at this point, they have to take these regents exam and the students like, but I never even took that class. So then it's like, how do you, with a really short timeline, make sure that, yeah, sure they have math credits because they have the right math credits to take this math regents, you know? Wow. Yeah, so there can be challenges like that. It does happen. How do we how do we get a 15-minute phone call with somebody in SED to say, you know, we're we're trying. I mean, the reason we put pre-K in was that it gave our kids a step up in the first and second third, or kindergarten, first, second. We're trying to do as much as we can with data and preparing for students. And then you just hand us students and go, well, I think the person, you know, is a human being. I mean, that's basically what we get. How do we, if, can we get a phone <coughs> call with somebody at SED and just ask whether or not they are thinking about it? I mean, you know, they give us enough crap when our data has a mistake in it. It would be, or a, a typo, or a, it's capitalized. And not, I just have to know some of these issues. Um, but, you know, I mean, if, if they're going to give us crap about our data, it'd be nice to see what they're planning. I'm actually on a, a data technical assistance with CERN, and Rose Leroy is, leads a lot of that work. So I can put it out to them and see yeah. what our next step would be if they're interested. Yeah, I I, I, don't know I would definitely be. like to yeah. hear what what's their plan. I mean, we they spend a lot of money. You know, are they planning to do something creative with it? Yeah. Cool. I'll email you when I get a response. There you go. Victoria, this. Um... Last bullet on page one. I don't know what that means. Am I missing? Is there a word? P through twelve initiative scope. Uh, Husband yes. or is it? Yeah, so, something missing. Um, so no, nothing's missing. So initiatives, just in general, like all the things that we have going on, we have a lot going on, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so we made this document, or we're making this document that that lays out in all the categories that you you have. Like from curriculum to ACL to um, clubs to tech, all the initiatives that we're doing, um, and the entire administrative team right now, this uh, Thursday actually is going to go through and edit it. And we're going to see who is running points on things, where are we at with things, and we'll kind of give um, a barometer for where the work is and has been. And then we will, of course, over the summer at our, you know, usually during our admin retreat, we uh, craft what we call a new. We've never had all the initiatives in one spot. Mm -hmm. So that's like work that is brand new and just started. Um, and I think we're all really excited about it. Like, let's just get this all in one spot and then dig in in a really thoughtful um, kind of like procedural manner mm -hmm. instead of just everyone grabbing it, you know? So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, all set. Everybody, anybody have any questions? All right, uh, old business, cell tower. That's me. That's Elliot. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. Um, 
right now. So uh, the facilities committee has been working with uh, AT&T's lease broker on this, and <coughs> it's coming to a point where we have to make a decision whether or not we're going to conceptually, you know, or the board's going to conceptually approve us to move forward with pursuing the renewal. So um, for those that are not aware, we have an AT&T cell tower that's currently uh, positioned behind our maintenance garage uh, at the foot of the hill in the high school. It's been there since 2003. Um, we were approached to renew the lease. It's a 60 month lease with five renewal periods. It's, it's a, like a, up to a 30 year lease um, for the new tower. And uh, basically what AT&T wants to do is upgrade this 4G tower to a 5G tower, uh, which would include adding some equipment to it and expanding its footprint. Um, I wish I could show you a diagram of what that expansion would look like, but I have three drawings of the existing and nothing locked up of what the new would look like, but essentially is adding guide wires that would go a little bit further out to support the tower and new equipment. Um, in board docs, you'll see there's two options for the lease agreement. Option one shows a gradual um, increase in lease payments to us. Uh, and then after year 15, I believe, it goes on to a 3% increase per year. Uh, option two is a 10% increase every five years. Um, so the money to the district would be more front loaded in option one. Uh, option two is, is more even out. But uh, at this point in time, I spoke with the broker again this, this afternoon just to understand what their expectations of, of us in terms of action. Um, if the board is willing to support this going forward, at least conceptually for now, our next steps would be to uh, share the documents that are shared with us with legal. Uh, in terms of the proposed agreement, any concerns by our council would then be shared with AT&T for them to have their lawyers take a crack at it, and then I would bring it back to the board for final approval. Well, some of the committee members want to share. I mean, for, for over a year, I've had two concerns. One, safety of 5G, <laughs> and two, the how large it's going to be as far as an ice work. I mean, we know we have to put concrete footers around the maintenance just to support um, the tower, and you know, I'm thinking it's at least going to double or triple the size of it. So, I don't know. Uh, you know, we asked for we were looking back in the notes, it was last August that before, we had asked yeah. for it. Was it before that? It was even before that. Brian asked them, I think Brian asked them just for a mock up as far as what it's going to look like. I mean, <laughs> course, you know, he had asked about safety, and they, they, they're going to put it off on you to research it because they don't want to be held liable. Well, do we have anything? That it might interfere with yeah. in terms of the signal. Yes, there's no. Well, you know, everything that they gave us says it's within you know the FCC's compliant you know range for 5G broadcast. Um, there's no there's no risk of interaction with our wireless network internally. Um, our network actually would block uh, any sort of Wi-Fi that's intrusive. So if somebody brings an AT&T hotspot into the building and tries to piggyback off the tower. Our Meraki system does block that for internal broadcasting. So there would be no interference with our instructional program. We can't speak to the health of this thing. Right. And if we don't upgrade it, it's not keep it as is, we would lose it. Right. right. They would find another client to relocate to. So this lease agreement is up in October. They're they're looking to take action now because if we don't if we don't go with it, they have to find another site. Right. Uh, and we would lose whatever potential revenue there is up to five thousand dollars a month, uh, depending on which option they want. So we're not at any it's going to sound stupid, but we're not on in or, in or on any flight plans that could be shifted. Not to my knowledge, truck. but I believe that that would uh, flight plan with like air traffic. Yeah, I don't believe so, but like that that would be on them to determine. You know, because they're they're leasing the land from us. So, so are they, but have they shown shown us that or told us? I that? haven't seen anything on FCC on FAA. That, I mean, the only one I would worry about is is um, across the river, Stewart. Um, yeah. because they have been known to, uh, you know, come in a little low at this mm -hmm. end of the flight path. Um, but I'm assuming, I mean, I don't know if we can just sort of trust them that they I mean, it's an RV and the high school is much higher than that. Yeah. You know, so I'm not, I don't think I'm worried about that. It's more of just, you know, the, the unknown of 5G and the students surrounding it. Um, of course, yeah. we don't want to pay the money, but I, I just well, think it's. But what do we, I mean, like right now, what do we get a year? I don't know the current number. It's about 50 to 55 cents. 50, 50, 50 to 55 cents per year, right? Yes. And, and that's pretty much what the renewal is looking like. Depending on which way we go, it's, it's around 4,045 cents a month. 
the way that they that well, you know, back when we did this thing, we thought it would be was that it would not be that much taller. If I'm, it would just be bigger, yeah. and they'd have to put the ballards around, mm -hmm. um, kind of behind where the garage. It would all is, be in that lower. But it wouldn't be in the way of like any any of the trucks or anything getting it out of there. But it would just be, shit, right? yeah, it would just be yeah to cord it mm -hmm. off so no one hit the things that go down to the ground. But it would be. Probably like bigger around. I don't think so. That would be so much taller. They're not going to put fencing and kind of fencing <coughs> up. So, so there's no, but, yeah, there's and no they, discussion of fencing. No, yeah, they show this real quick. I'm just concerned for fencing for, uh, you know, for, for anybody going over and trying to play around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to say. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is our garage on all the <coughs> This is where the existing uh, model of the tower is mm -hmm. and the trailer block. So you know if the if the tower gets wider, the guidelines would you know come out in these directions. So. Has anybody has, has anybody? I mean, I know we don't have responsibility to like the planning board or zoning board of appeals, but has anybody from the village or especially from the condos down there has anybody ever said like, "God, that thing's ugly" or? You know, I mean, I'm sure complaint. they've said that, but um, <laughs> I've never received a complaint about it since I've been here. I don't know if anybody else has. There's a tree line, isn't there? Between yes, there's <clears> a, a tree line all the way around the garage, actually. There's so this is all the place here, and then there's trees wrapping around behind it. Again, the high school's all behind the Yeah, I wrote same tower, but more weight on top, so you need the wires from the top to the ballards. On top of a concrete slab. I mean, that's that's one of those. You know, if you say, "Geez, it's only fifty thousand dollars," should we really be risking this? You know, you're going to get the question of, "What are we risking?" On the other hand, saying it's only fifty thousand dollars when we're trying to find money for summer lunch programs. Hmm. Uh, because you know, as technology advances, I mean, they're putting 5G up on light posts. Yeah. So I don't see how, that's why I want to ask them why it's going to be twice the size and what's the radius of this return. I don't know. Like I said, the drawings they gave us are not really illustrative. Like I can show you other things, it just dots on papers. Oh, no, I mean, you can look up 5G cell towers online, and some of them just look like they have the bars all the way around it, and yeah. some are just three bars on a, on a telephone pole. Yeah. But I think it's a, it, the architecture of 5G is sort of. You know, you connect from this thing to this thing to this thing to that thing, and each one of those points has a different physical structure to it. When Just do they? Like, when do they need to know? Uh, they'd, they'd like to know by the end of April. We told them that it would probably be early May, the earliest that we could make a decision, only because we want to run it by legal. They asked that if we're going to conceptually move forward, that we just share with them whatever legal red line even before the board adopts it, just so they can take a look at what our parameters might be. Right now, I would like to see them uh, be a little more forthcoming with what they are actually planning on doing. They expect us to move forward and jump through hoops, and they don't want to share uh, certain information with us. Um, so would, would a mock-up drawing be something the board wants to see before moving forward, or should should I send the I can send the documents to legal and request the drawing and bring it all back as a package? Yeah, you know, we, we could, in theory, go move forward conceptually on our end, as long as they can be more forthcoming if that's what the board would like to do. Uh, but I agree with Chris, the unknown, uh, we're putting up this, you know, what's going to be next type of deal too. You know, I don't, I don't know whose idea was to put, well, it, it doesn't matter. We just got money for different cell towers, uh, throughout the different generations of cell towers, but with 5G, there, there is information, uh, both ways on safety. So, yeah. The tough choice. I'm wondering if you could ever, you know, sign it with a contingency of a safety check because it's in school district of whatever it might be, radiation levels or whatever it might be that we're concerned with. You know, or we do it on our own. I don't know. Well, yeah, I, I think that you know, I can't imagine AT&T is going to step up and say, 
you know, we certified this, nobody's ever going to get sick. No, they're not. You know, because so, yeah, then the lawsuits all go yeah, their way. Because I did write that they that they provided a report, but I just wrote who can interpret. So I don't know if there is a report somewhere. Just the, I one, just the one that you have is the one that I have. Okay, the one I, and then I just Googled it. New York Times article said that some doctor back in the 2000s said, oh my God, this is going to happen. And they kind of poo pooed it now. And they're saying that it's, so again, just one article. I'm not saying it's, yeah, the, one, the whole thing is, I mean, even the airport stuff is, yeah, some say yes, some say no. Um, it's just between three schools, so it's in our, <laughs> it's in our yeah. best interest to come and just do a little investigation. Sometimes. And I did reach out to NICER at uh, Lawrence's uh, recommendation, so we want to get our insurance carrier's perspective as well. So mm -hmm. I want to get an answer from that, I'll share it. Yeah, why don't we plan on, if we can get enough information, we plan on making the decision of the, the May 8th or whatever that meeting is. First board meeting? Yeah. Um, Let's mark back to you. I want to make a resident subsidy. Yeah. And can it, do we get, any, other than the 50 grand, do we get anything out of it? Can we use the technology? Can will they give us all free access to 5G? <laughs> I mean, well, we asked about hotspots. Yeah, we did. We asked about hotspots, and there, there wasn't anything available at the time. There wasn't anything. Well, there wasn't a deal available. Oh, I, I was going to say we don't, ask because we we don't have any. For, uh, <laughs> no, we were, we were looking for hotspots, but this was at the time when they physically didn't have any stock either. Right, okay. right during the beginning of COVID. Yeah, I mean, you know, if it wasn't for the fifty thousand dollars, we'd we'd probably just sell them and pull the thing down and get rid of it. It's how much is fifty grand worth for this? Mm -hmm. I can touch base with first thing in the morning. I'll ask for that revised drawing uh, to share with the board. When the, when I get the nice information back, I'll share that as well, uh, and I can send their tentative agreement to people for review and see what that agreement might look like. I can bring it all back to the board. Are you okay well, with that? From a, just from a straw poll standpoint, what do you, what do you, what's your position now? I mostly like to just see an elevation of the first. Okay. But you don't yeah. mind? I think it's, if it doesn't go for it, it goes someplace else. Okay. That's true too. Yeah. Good. I, I trust the safety committee on this one. Yeah. Good. I'm more concerned about the size than the safety, to be honest with you. Um, but, and they're not sending it to us because they're requesting too much time. Yeah, I mean, the thing they needed to know is we need this before we make a decision, or that's going to make our decision. Okay. Jen? Yeah, I would agree with the same. I mean, I'm trying to look it up really quickly. I for safety, and then I would go with size. But the way that, I mean, again, if my notes are correct. It would just be bigger on top if mean, it's still below the tree line and it's not in the way of what the maintenance garage needs. I'm already I'm right with that. Um, it just would be nice for them. Again, we asked for it. This is, I think, back in August. And I think, like, at the next meeting, I think Brian said that he asked again for it. And we still hadn't heard. Oh. <coughs> yeah, one hand washes the other. They want us to move, and we, they provide, we'll move forward and have a leader. But if they're not going to show us what they exactly plan on doing, then how can we make an informed decision? And it's still one of these just steel looking things. It's, you know, you see some of them in the mountains where they're, they're basically fake trees, yeah. and they're real fake trees. But uh, at least it's a little better than looking at that. 5G tower. Okay. All right. So, with whatever we have on the eighth, we need to make a decision. Hurry um, right. on with you. <laughs> I scared that for Jesus out of me, bro. This, this is God. This is God from heaven. <laughs> oh crap. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm uh I'm good. I mean, I I am concerned about the aesthetic, but I I would. Like to possibly get a little more information, but I like the concept. All right. I didn't mean to scare you, Pat. Yeah, I mean when when the owl starts yelling, it, it, it freaks me out a little bit. All right. All right. So, Charlie.
got that for the May 18th. All right, uh, policy 1230, uh, second reading. Uh, any comments about it? Questions, concerns? <clears throat> uh, public comment on 1230? What it is. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'd like to know what it is. The policy 1230. Is it is it on the website? Well, yeah. It, it, well, the the one that's being reviewed is on the agenda. <laughs> if you look at uh, old business item two, and then in there is the, <clears throat> the one that we're reviewing is there. Yeah. 12. All right, uh, do I have a motion to adopt 12.30? I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, any questions or concerns from the board? Okay, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? <clears throat> All right, uh, a second reading of 9585, uh, health insurance. Uh, do I have a motion? I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry, never mind. Um, any questions or concerns? Uh, I'm going to have a motion. <coughs> uh, do I have a motion to uh, approve it? Second. All right. Uh, questions, comments, concerns? All right. All in favor? All right. Any against? Financials and warrants. I do have a motion to approve? Do you accept? Oh, do I have a second? I'll second. Any uh, questions, comments? I just, Kevin, I have one like weird question. Why is it notification 1282, approval 1283? Is it, is that, some come from some mm -hmm. transaction system. Can you tell me where you see that? Um, go to go to new business, the uh, financials and warrants. If you yeah. go down through the recommended a, a recommended action, the right. budget transfer says notification twelve eighty two, approval twelve eighty three. Is that just some transaction number, or is that a? I don't, I don't know what that. I believe it's it's was a transaction number. There is a printout of the uh, actual budget transfers. I believe we have uh, two separate sections, and that's what I believe the notations are. Okay. Uh, If you look on the left hand side, there's a reference number 1282, and it lists the number of uh, the budget transactions, and the second one below is 1283. Where, where I'm sorry, where it's are you? In the extreme that? left hand side. If you look under in the top left hand corner, it's over Central School District. And it has oh, you're talking about in the, the actual yeah. detail. Yes, I it's got a you. reference number, they're two separate reference numbers. So that's what the notification is. You see it on the left? Yeah. I have an actual printout of it. So. Oh, wait a minute. I, I didn't realize there was another one down the left. Let me just. Okay. If, if you like, I can bring it over. Check no, it. no, I, I got you. There's, there's too many pages of like six pages. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't, I just couldn't tell what that number was. All right, all in favor? 
Any against? Okay. Opposition one. Budget. Um, do I have a motion? Go to second. All right. Any questions, comments, concerns? Can I ask a question? This is the budget, the one that we've been going with. Do we know about the state? Um, yes, this is the budget we've been talking about over the last three to four months with the various presentations yeah. uh, that we've had. And uh, it also, we're looking to improve the expenditure side, here, which is really what's the most uh, proposition that we put out there. And supporting that is a number of revenue items, real property taxes, state aid, uh, it's other items, cell phone, uh, so and, uh, additional revenue that comes in for various health services and various things that we've talked about over the last couple of months. Uh, yes, we did incorporate the updated state aid numbers. Okay, yeah. um, so the number if you do a budget to budget comparison is not as large only because some of the dollar amounts that were budgeted last year did not come in. Um, they're really projections and as the state goes through and reviews all our actual expenditures, there could be some increases or decreases throughout the year. Unfortunately, there were some decreases. So the increase is about $80,000. It's not as large as we had hoped it to be. That's only because of the audit process of looking at um, 19, 20 expenditures and information through 21 of these that was submitted to the state. So, but it is the most up to date uh, revenue projections on all accounts. And even within the real property tax levy, uh, that increase is uh, at 1.83%. Now, you may recall when we first started to look at the budget, I did the real property tax uh, calculation. We did a presentation for that. And at that particular time, we could, with various adjustments, going up to 2.97%. So we were able with increases in revenues and increases in applied fund balance to bring that down below the 2%, which right now we set at 1.83%. And again, the next step we would do is we start to put together the actual property or the uh, budget hearing presentation for the uh, beginning of May. And, and when did, when does the um, the mailings go out? Um, actually, mailings we're in the process right now of updating the budget newsletter. Okay. And uh, the next item on is for the property tax with the oh. card. Okay. So that would be the next item we'll ask the board to submit. We'll put the card to approve. And adopt. We'll send that to the state education department. And again, be part of the information will be part of what is uh, put out in our budget newsletter and various uh, information sharing tools so the public has to know when the best information uh, as it has their balance uh, coming up in May. So, and that's it. And the money for the cell tower that really is just an extra revenue place, it wouldn't affect the tax cap. Um, no, it Any other questions? Comments? Um, I'm looking at it. I just want to make sure there weren't any changes from the May. What you handed out, I'm sorry, what you handed out at the last meeting. Um, there's some minor adjustments because what we looked at earlier uh, in the presentation, we were waiting for the state to release its budget, the state budget. So we were working on numbers that was released by the state preliminary back in January, I think it was January like 18th and 19th. So we've taken the most current information, again, the budget uh, presentations, the state aid presentations, uh, and all the discussions that we've had over the last few months have incorporated into the final document. So very minor changes uh, as we get a clearer picture from the state. And, uh, but the overall dollar amount of the budget uh, is not increased. Okay. So I think this is probably more of a, a question for the administration, but I'm just noticing a slight decrease in um, staff and then administration and improvement from last year to this year. Is that, I mean, you might not be able to go into great detail, but since, since it is decreased, I just want to hear that everyone's confident about staffing and personnel especially with some of the recent um, behavioral well, incidents. I, I think as we look as part of the budget discussions, there's been some movements and changes in classifications of individuals. 
So where you may see a decrease in one area, it does represent a decrease in, in, in the corresponding decrease in the other area. So some of that was moved uh, of stack into different budget codes. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm not aware, I believe we have all the staffing requests that the office comes to the business office. But doesn't it change? We had a quite a few retirements. Um, oh, yes, you, so, you have retirement. Right, so from a dollar people. standpoint, the retirement, like the salary <laughs> part goes out, and mm -hmm. a lower salary comes in. The retirement stuff goes up, but that's not in the same. It's like take it out of here, move it over here. You that know, would probably be more teacher, though. It, I mean, I, 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 I'm thinking about is more support staff. Yeah, well, I, I think there's there's been quite a few retirees in that in that area. Part, so. Okay, I mean, you you guys know what you need. <laughs> um, no. well, yeah. But I I'm, I'm talking to the administration yeah. and no, just right. you know right. the tutorial monitors or things <clears> like that. You guys are good there, and you need to add, or if anything was added. That was my taking words anyway. Sorry. Perhaps I just. Um... So you're uncomfortable about that or something. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not no, here. I'm saying you question me. I'm questioning because we have, good. you know, a, a um, increase reports mm -hmm. and there's programs on the horizon but the preventive piece would fall into place first and that would be the environment environmental modifications which right. include supervision right i just want to yes i understand. make I sure we're starting that way smoothing and it right but you know, you have you're confident you have everything you need. Yeah, and I mean, based on how you know that the work we're doing, and if we do it an overall inventory or we're looking at um, new approaches to behavior, we may say, well, actually, we do need a couple more people here, maybe whether it's a teacher or support staff. Um, but right now, we feel we're in a good place, but it could change right with it more information, more programming. So you could still, I mean, obviously, um, the budget's approved, but if you need something through the year. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I, mean, yes. I mean, it. part of what we have to do every time, you know, whatever it is, if, as I think as Laura said, you know, if, if, if we're going to change policy and we need, you know, and I'll make it up, we need a, a person to, to watch vaping in every bathroom. Mm -hmm. We need, you know, a, 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 response, yeah. a, a response, you know, a set of response people to, to deal with uh, violations, or whatever it is, that has to come to us with a price tag. Right. So, you know, okay, where are you going to get these people from? Where <laughs> are you taking two out of here? Like when we went to COVID. Yeah, maybe not went to COVID. We moved into that whole full remote so and AABB and all that stuff. We had, I think at one point it was like 17 extra people we had to bring on board just to run that mm -hmm. program. It wasn't in the quote budget, right? But <clears throat> yes, yeah. we can add as necessary. Well, and that includes like uh, like monitor, you know, we were talking about like, you know, kids out in the playground. And I just remember that we <coughs> thought we might not have enough monitors. Do, it, do we either have enough or is it in the budget? And, you know, like um, cafeteria staff, janitorial staff. I know, I'm just thinking like you said, back to COVID, are we, is that all in there? Everything that we either have and we're, and we're, um, what are we for? we're at full staff or that we need, <coughs> we're good there. Or whole that was we're missing, you know, it's when people leave, like you'll see here, somebody um, is resigning. Right. But that's like they're already in the budget. Right. Yeah. Thank you. And, and also throughout the year, we can make adjustments. And we're also looking not only the current year, but on a long term basis, too. For example, nobody expected uh, a year ago that gas prices were going to be at this particular point. 
that someone had to make, and that's part of the budget transfer process. You had to look and make some decisions to meet the current needs and what can be looked at and maybe addressed in a future uh, point of time because you really have to stay within the total overall uh, concept and dollar amounts of the budget. You're not allowed to go over the budget. So, you know, there are some things that we're also looking at on the short term and on the long term basis. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's basically you start out with this budget and then it's a constant balancing act. Any other questions about it? Comments? Concerns? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Aye. Thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> you got to you got to do something. Paul. Even whistle, do a whoo or something, so I know the owl's <laughs> about to speak. Good lord. Um, that's pretty tax report card. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the property tax report card? I did. Jump. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, right, sorry my ears. Kind of shy. All right. Um, questions, comments? Oh, one. I don't. One. <coughs> one little thing. Just because I noticed on the enrollment report um, further down tonight that our enrollment's at 842 now. And yes. so I didn't know if that needed to be uh, we changed. Can, we can adjust that. If you okay. look at it, every month, the number kind of changes. Right. It's 840 for two months. Right. Went to 839, now it's at 842. Yeah. So when this is prepared, it was before I even seen the Oh, I was just yeah. But if you like, we can put 842. Well, I just. Um, it's really just a snapshot in time. That's fine. I didn't want you to miss any money. Uh, <laughs> For those two people. Yeah, <laughs> by name, by name, by name has guys never miss money. It, it won't drive any money. It has to okay. play if you were looking to make an adjustment to property tax and you don't go over. I see. It, it comes into play. You can make some adjustments for your own uh, your enrollment, but you won't have any money. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right, all in favor? All right. All right. Any against? All right. Um, but, and maybe this is for you, Cheryl. Where's the rest of the mail? -in? You know all the the stuff that goes with it, all the glossy stuff. <laughs> Is that, the whole budget is like yeah, the mean? whole package. Of yeah, budget. we're um, that's what Kevin was referencing to. We're working on it with OCs right now. Okay. So every time we do something, we're updating it with them, okay. and then we'll review it, and then it'll get mailed out. Okay, but we're we'll, we're when do we have to send that out? I think it's it has to be like we have to send it out. I think it has to be in home. Yeah, there's a budget postcard which is part of the mail, which is a state notice. We can send, we'll send it out earlier. We have to have the actual uh, budget hearing the presentation of our groups before that. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll, we'll have all that by the end of the month. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's that. Thank you. That was basically my question. Are we got to have it ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, we're, we're, it's almost done, actually. Okay. We're, we're in competition with every other school. <laughs> trying to get the same information. All right. Uh, corrective action plan. Yeah, this, oh. is, yep, this is from an audit um, in June 30th, on June 30th, 2021. And like many other districts, there was a hand tallying of meals served. So in September, we went back to our um, our computer system for tracking and using student IDs. So we're, we're back in compliance. Okay. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. Any, <clears throat> any questions or concerns, comments? Well, there's always concerns with food service. <laughs> Especially with past track record. Uh, but with the food service committee, uh, 
is everything or where are we at in the place? Uh, well, now in, in share, I did email you, but I don't know if it was updated in your records. It's um, myself and Jennifer and on that committee. Um, when did we meet last? Not, not when, when you were really in the throes of, <laughs> of taking everything on. So at that point we were um, making sure that um, Laura had everything she needed in terms of personnel to hire. And yeah, some changes are coming up there, but um, which is good. Right, taking the addition of a, a book. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, so you can well, spend your up. time on what you need to spend your time on. Yeah. Yeah. But, but with record keeping, which is yeah. been a traditional right. uh, problem here in the past, uh, yeah. is, Hopefully that will be streamlined and, and yes. stepped up a lot better. That, that, that's the only point. That but yeah, I mean that 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 is sort of the point, though. I mean, it's this the audit recommended, um, basically making sure that more precise records are kept. Um, again, because they're being kept on paper, basically. Um, we're comfortable that we're not. We're not doing any of that paper stuff anymore. We're doing, we're putting it where it belongs. We're you pulling them, pulling the information out. Yes. And I met with the auditors regarding this as well. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> this is data that you're going to make sure you verify. <laughs> I'll, I'll do the work. Yes. <laughs> all right. Do we have uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? Aye. Letter of resignation. Listen. Wasn't there one? Person that was taking a new job. That was, was resigning. That was up in consent. That was in consent oh, because they yeah. were. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the resignation of Brian Avery? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any questions or comments? Sad to see him go. Great asset to the Lobo family. Where we can at least, at least afford it. All right, all in favor? Aye. Any against? Letter of resignation from uh, Alexander Meisner. Uh, a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? All right. And then um, a letter of resignation from Elena Biasi. Do I have a motion? I know we don't want to share. No. no. Yeah. Well, you can make a motion that we just tell her no. Right. All right. I'll second. Any discussion? Uh, that's a sad one. Sad. I know. I can just speak from as a parent. Kids love her. Yeah. Love her. Hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? No. Uh, next is the uh, questions from the public. Questions from the public. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. What I should have told you guys last time is in our policy, you keep your comments to three minutes and yeah. please don't refer to other students. Yeah. So my name is Carolyn Fish. This is my daughter, Alexa. Uh, we did attend the last meeting and spoke of the issues that Alexa encountered bullying. Uh, we're tonight, I, I know that you can't directly tell us or the school can't tell us what is done to the child that the complaint is made against, right? It's policy or whatever it is. But if, if that's how it's gonna be, how do we know as parents or the student themselves that it's something is actually being taken care of? Because as far as we can see, and, and I know that everybody has their rights and everything, but we should at least be afforded some sort of information to let us know that, okay, they are taking this seriously instead of just thinking the minute I walked out of here, it's just dropped and not talked about again because she's still being bullied every single day in school. She's still being tormented, harassed, intimidated. It hasn't stopped since I met with Sype, the superintendent, and, and the board. So we're very discouraged by that. Um, I, I did like all the stuff that Caroline mentioned about the programs and stuff that you that you want to bring in, but if we don't have the building principals doing their jobs and holding the students accountable for their actions, then all of those programs in my opinion, are going to be wasted because nothing is being done by the building principles. Well, I think you you basically, we cannot tell you, you know, look, we just kicked little Joey out and he's not back, allowed back. And we, put it on war, it's not we just can't. Um, and you may think the principals are not doing anything, but you really don't have access to the other side of the story because we can't. It, right. it would be like your doctor, you know, telling all your other, all his patients that your child has some disease because he's worried about making sure they know that the doctor is taking it seriously. Um, so, so I, I really, I cringe at the, at the, they're not doing anything because you can't see it. Um, I mean, you can see it for, for one person, for your daughter, but you can't see what they're doing right. for, to the other students. Right. But she can see the child in school every single day and still yep. harassing her every single day. So even if the principal did his job, it wasn't effective because it's still happening. So that's where I was going with not doing their jobs. Did you say something to her? Okay. I just don't, I don't see. <laughs> uh, I understand that we can't know what's happening with the other suit. It's law, that's fine. But what are we doing to know that our, our bullying issue district-wide, something like besides the, the programs that Caroline mentioned, is there anything that's going to be happening in the school every in all of the schools like before all of those programs come into play or are we just supposed to like hold our breath and hope for the best i know these aren't questions that you're to answer now it's just stuff that i wrote down want to run by you um we uh we, we discussed last time as well that the students, especially in the middle school and the high school, are already uncomfortable speaking to the administration. And that's for many reasons, but they don't even want to file reports anymore of this conduct to the administration because the non-existent history is what the only way I can put it of the administration doing anything about it. I've had so many kids reach out to me after the board meeting last time saying, you know, because they saw that I spoke up for Alexa and Alexa stood up for herself and they asked me or told me their stories. And these are stories that they have told to teachers or to their principals and nothing was ever done about it. So I know that we're not the only ones going through this. 
I just, I really don't understand why my daughter is still allowed to be harassed in school every single day. And I'm up here often dropping things off for the kids and that. And, and Deputy Freer will stop me every single time he sees me and he'll give me a little update, but he's, he's not in the, the high school all day. Nobody can expect him to. So he's hopping between schools, but he does try his best to keep an eye out for Alexa. But that's one person within all of those people. He, he's the only one that I really feel like is, is looking out for her. I'm tired of history repeating itself with all of this. She has two years of high school left. I don't want her suffering for the next two years. It's just, you, you can't expect a child to do that. Um, and I'm just, I'm at a loss at this point. I just need to come here tonight, inform you yourself that it is still happening every single day. And until it stops, we will be here every meeting. Okay. I understand, you know, this board understands your uh, your frustration, and I can tell you that we took uh, your daughter and yourself uh, your comments and very seriously last time, and we did discuss it at uh, at in detail, and that's why things are being planned. And but I, uh, this board, I'm sure, speaking <coughs> for the board. We do not want to see things work so slowly that your daughter is, is constantly harassed. Uh, and all I can do is say thank you for constantly bringing it forward. But as much as we understand your frustration, things do not, it's government, and do not work as quickly as we'd like. Uh, and we will move forward with uh, discussions with administration again. And, but proof is in the pudding. It has to, uh, you know, it's, it's what occurs daily. A lot of what? What's going to occur daily oh. with your daughter. Right. That's where the proof is. Right. Um, and, and a large issue, and I understand things take time and programs like that, just gathering the information to present to the school will take time. But her safety shouldn't, That's you know, correct. interfere with, that shouldn't interfere with her safety. I shouldn't have to, you know, worry every day or her worry every day that today's going to be the day something seriously bad happens just because things take time. Like, we need to figure out a solution mm -hmm. for this problem with the other child, like now, so that it doesn't become far worse. I, I believe this board's in agreement with that. It's just that we have to work with administration there. They, they see it and deal with it daily. So, but the board has no power, like per se, over. What we can do is we can change the policies. And, and basically, you know, one of the, like the example, our policy is, to, it is there's graduated punishment. You know, the first time it happens, this happens. The second time, this happens. Um, we have the option of going to zero tolerance. I have, believe I would see the entire, you know, parents in here saying, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. My child pulled their cell phone out of their pocket to take a picture and you suspended them. That's zero tolerance. Didn't we have you, zero tolerance bullying policy though? Well, it, it, it's a matter of getting that, you know, like if the first time it happens, you're out for five days or whatever, whatever the policy mm -hmm. should be. That's what the board does. Mm -hmm. The day-to-day -day administration of these things um, because we don't have, you know, it, and, and please don't take this wrong, but you can tell me you got other parents coming to you saying that, but nobody comes. Mm -hmm. We have, you can say that, you know, all these other kids are having these bullying issues or that, but is that because you, you know, they went to you and said certain things about their kids? which you can't tell us and we can't know. I mean, we're not allowed to talk about specific kids. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, the board's role in this is really as an overseer um, to, to decide whether we're gonna have major changes to policies, um, but you know, we heard all the <laughs> budget discussions. Uh, we get to deal with the lawyers all the time. Um, that's the board's job, but. Uh, we also won't let it rest, so. Mm -hmm.
And I did just want to add, I just wanted to add that um, when you were talking about extra monitors and aids and all of that, um, I think that you should consider asking parents to volunteer. I, I know that I would be happy to volunteer to make sure <coughs> that there's staff up on the field um, at practice time before the coaches make it up there or lunchroom or you know, recess to make sure that the kids are safe. I think that a lot of parents would be more than happy to volunteer to make sure that everybody is safe. And I, and I think that also for when it comes to bullying or harassing or anything, I think that you should add in, in the policy for repeat offenders, maybe a one-to-one -one aid is necessary for, for certain things. I know it's a, it's a big, it's a big one, but yeah. well, yeah. I'll do it for free. Yeah. But yeah, I just okay. wanted to throw that in there. Thank you. Thank you. Did you? No. Did you have something? I'm here to support. Okay. We have anything online? What we had online was basically discussed through this discussion. Okay. And then uh, there were two others, but they. Um, not in reference to things. Okay. All right. Glasses on so I can see where I am. Oh, safety committee. Mm -hmm. So the safety committee met, the distance safety committee uh, met <coughs> on April 6th. So we had updates from each building um, as to where they are in terms of their prior drills for the year. Um, pretty good news. Everybody is up to date and moving along. Um, I think they are waiting for some warm weather to finish out <laughs> the rest of their drills. Um, we are currently working on reunification. So that is a big undertaking. Um, so in the event of any incident um, that can destabilize the organization for any period of time, we would be seeking to reunify the appropriate adult with the child student in our care. Um, so what does that look like and what are we preparing for? And we really have to think about all of the sort of nuances to reunification. Reunification could happen in the building where the student is. It could happen um, having to go to another building in the district. It could happen having to bus students to an out-of-district location undisclosed um, and have to reunify from there. So the first thing that we would need to do is accounting for all persons. Where are the students that we have? Um, and then ensuring any custody information that we would need to verify in order to pair students back with their appropriate adult caregiver. Um, so we talked about how to like incorporating Elliot's role here and getting the data grab on any of that updated um, orders of protection or anything like that, custodial information. Um, and then <coughs> having two staff members from each building that would be like their communication team lead so that, um, in any situation, there are two people who know exactly what they have to do. Um, and those, those teams would be trained universally so that if we needed to pull, say, two folks from the high school to assist with reunification at Alden, they know exactly what to do, they know where everything is. Um, I can bring to a meeting once it's finished, but we actually, you saw it in the conference room, there's that beautiful, big, um, it's like a craftsman tool bin. Um, and that's where everything for unification, reunification will be for each building. And we'll also have um, backup copies of the reunification information in district offices. So we'll also have folks from district office that are trained in the reunification protocols um, so that if at any moment and a building cannot assist and something else going on or it's an issue affecting multiple buildings, we have other folks um, say folks from my office who aren't necessarily attached to a building that can be deployed to assist in the reunification process. So um, we have selected some dates, preliminary dates, that we will run through the actual reunification process without it being an emergency, but it would be after an event. So it wouldn't be a typical dismissal, so to speak, that we would run through the reunification process in the building towards the end of this year. And how do we... I mean, that sounds like something that could easily get outdated, like you know, yes. two new students or 
one that's new why teacher. we would be doing the data poll okay the periodic data poll to be able to ensure that we have the most mm -hmm. up-to-date information on our students yes mm -hmm. um sure. and then most importantly on any orders of protection banning certain people from collecting right. students but you know we have access as long as we have internet we have access to almost everything but the point of the data poll is that it would pull to certain district laptops so as long as i have this device i have it on the local hard drive yeah. list of parents um, students or parents their contact information emergency contact information so it would be a very minimal amount that we would have to do research for and when we do the these other drills <laughs> has the new um the new lock I, i'll call it lockdown software but it was there was a bunch of changes going on in the fall has all that been run through one of these it's in progress so we've just been keeping the committee updated as we go on the administration okay. so they know what to expect um, and we're still kind of working both sides we still want people we, we, we tested we spot checked the address reporting for 91 but caroline still gave the directive that everybody should still self-report the address of their location sure. just as a, as a fail safe when the new phones uh, are, are placed, every single handset is going to call 911 and test the address of the capability. Mm -hmm. So as, as we're upgrading our phone system and the informant cast in parallel, we'll be running all these very granular tests and then keeping each other abreast of what's happening so that our procedures will uh, react quickly. And we're actually pushing ahead in one particular area because we have been able to write the phones being pulled. Um, there is some dialogue about whether or not phones should, when when we deploy the, the lockdown system, whether or not they should auto dial 911. Um, there was a little bit of pushback. Um, and we said that's time wasted, <coughs> right? For someone to have to then dial it out to 911. So we will be one of the first schools that's looped right into that 911 system. Yeah, I mean, who, who would, who was complaining? I want one. <laughs> I mean, no, actually, no. There was just some concern about whether or not that should happen. It could happen accidentally. And I mean, okay, it yeah. could, but, <laughs> but every second that goes by is right. high waste of getting the good guys here to, you know, not many bad actors. It's going to be interesting is if we could use, let's say we lose the networking in the district. If we could then flap over to the cell tower, assuming it's still there. <laughs> Part of our, um, you know, we, we have battery backups on all of our voice over IP network here, so we, we get, you know, an extensive period of time beyond the power outage where okay. our phones still operate. Um, I don't know that we would remain occupied beyond that window. Um, okay. And we do have other ways if we were to lose the voice over IP system, we do in every single building have other ways of contacting them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I think with our capital project, we're going to be looking at redundant power solutions to, you know, our network backbone that would include all of this as well. So, uh, and I know we're not going to talk about it here, but are there still any major investments that we need to do to, you know, step it up? Are you asking me if we have things we can spend money on? No. Carrie no. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. just asked for my wish list. Yeah. Hold on, let me go get it. I was actually, I was more in the, uh, can we cut some of them on there? Uh, <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, is there, are there, uh, I don't want to say something that is stupid. Are, is there anything that we, like that we're going to wait for the capital project. I mean, the capital project's probably two years, at least, to so, get started. I mean, it won't run for two years. In the short term, and I think Caroline alluded to the, us being like the first ones that would auto-report tonight, <coughs> there's certain aspects to the system that we're going to really pilot or pioneer in our region. There's other things that are uh, laws that are being discussed, and I don't want to get too detailed yeah. with what they are. But there are some certain legal requirements that we see coming down the pipe that our vendors have prepared us for that we may jump on preemptively that involve a hardware and software solutions. So we'll be talking to the board if we need to free up some cash to do that. But it would certainly be getting ahead of the requirement in the best interest of our student safety. Mm -hmm. um, I think right now with the cursory conversations we've had, we probably have the means to address those things. Um, and I think the big stuff is already budgeted for. So. Other than redundant power that's beyond what our local batteries can provide, I think we're okay for it. Yeah. 
and you know, I, I just always worry. But the, the pre-K kids, we really, and I assume kind of kindergarten too, but emergency pre-K is going to be like, you know, honey, uh, bees on honey. I mean, they're just going to be, are we? You would think, right? Set? But so that's why we have to practice every single time, like game day, mm -hmm. right? So <laughs> we work with them in the beginning and we walk them through things, sort of um, like we read social stories and stuff, explain what's going to happen <coughs> to them. We walk them through it all before the building actually goes through it. Um, so that they can see it. We make it very predictable for them. And little by little, we kind of pull back on that predictability so that when the alarm goes off, this is what we do. But then they already know they have a routine. So they practice their fire drills without the rest of the building prior to a fire drill so that when it's time to go, they know exactly what they need to do. Um, of course, there's a learning curve, but you know, the more times they do it, yeah. Um, the, the more seamless it goes. And the one thing that we always say in school <coughs> safety is like, we plan for the inevitable and, um, you know, in those types of things and every single incident is dynamic and even the best plans sometimes go out the window and we need our adults to be able to think on their feet yeah. and make the best decision for the students in their care. That's why we practice all these things. Okay. Any other comments or questions? <laughs> is, is there anything we need to inform parents about that could actually help um, the district? So I'm just thinking back to mold, right? Where it was, <laughs> oh, you know, word, right? I, right, I, you know, I had a kindergartner and a second grader and, you know, got the call, go to the village hall, right? That yeah. was very different than pick them up at school, mm -hmm. but the call came. So, um, I mean, so personally, I know, well, I don't know, is it still the village hall? So we would never the... disclose that because in the event of an okay. emergency, Got it. Um, any of our rally points, the last thing we would want is okay. people crashing there before we can yeah. get an orderly set up um, and before law enforcement can secure so that we make sure that we have absolute control that <coughs> only you are able to take your children. So we would never actually disclose the locations of our reunification points for, for safety and security. Um, the way that we would do that is our typical, like the alert now system where we, we would get the phone call and the, um, similar to like an emergency clothing, we would put information on our website. Like we would do all of the things that we would normally do to communicate any other type of emergency mm -hmm. um, for parents. But that is something that that's why it's in our building safety plans, which are secure and cannot be foiled, rather than in our district plans. Okay. So if there's, I mean, I don't know what this situation would be, but no internet, you can't call out. Mm -hmm. we would where use the radio. should parents think We would of... use the like regular old radio system. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we have like backups for backups. Okay. Um, and then... Yeah, it could always get to a situation that so parents will be contacted even if it's an old-fashioned phone, yeah. telephone. So. Yeah, yeah. And we do have hardwired phones if we need to. Yeah. Um, so we we have systems backups for our backups. And one of the things that um, Family University I'm waiting on right now for the May 19th is the possibility of um, so Frank Aguirre, who is our partner from um, Hutton Road Marshall Circle to use regional safety. Um, he is tentative. He has um, a grad class that he may or may not attend in person that night. If not, he will be here to do a presentation <coughs> for him. Um, but otherwise, we will um, schedule that for a different time. Thanks. So we're just waiting on his schedule. What about things like updating um, contact information, mm -hmm. especially for like that like second, third, and fourth level contact? Because a lot yeah. of times mm -hmm. it's unusual finding that kind of getting the parents or yeah. the grandparents or. We so prompt people every year to update it. We do. And um, so that's like, this is like a great opportunity just for parents who are listening. If that changes, right, make sure that you notify the school, whether it's someone you want to add or someone you want to delete. Um, and that is where that data pull, that periodic data pull that is auto um, sent to the district laptops, that's where it becomes really important because odd times a day, we may not get a parent. Um, and then just thinking about too, when you sign up for the Blackboard messengers, um, those emergency messages, you know, <clears throat> making sure that you know um, what, who, 
is signed up for because some folks are like emergency only. I don't want this information. Um, we get calls from, you know, grandma, please take me off of this. I don't want to get all these phone calls, but then it's an emergency and grandma's not getting the phone call and you're depending on grandma. Um, so just something to think about, you know, when you have something in emergency contact that they understand they may get phone calls from us that might be annoying sometimes, but that's also the only way we're going to contact them in an emergency. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Enrollment report is there for your entertainment. Um, I Oh, I'm sorry. I think it might be a typo. Yeah. yeah. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Just the under placement mm -hmm. special education students pre K when you're 16 to 21. Because at first I thought I they wasn't yeah, looking at them like we have that many kids enrolling. <laughs> I'm like, you might want to fix the book. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. MEF report. Oh, yes. So, um, oh, we just awarded or donated. Um, granted, granted is the word, uh, $3,500 for um, a fancy machine. For the, <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't, a, fa a fancy machine for the, for the weight room at the, at the high school because I can't find the technical name of it right now. So um, yeah, we're happy to do that. And also um, they're very happy that we could donate uh, some money towards the the uh, performance of Greece, which was wonderful, fabulous. Um, then our Taste to Go fundraiser is still for Saturday of June. Um, tentatively, it's more of like a, a 12, 12 to 4, 12 to 6 time frame. Again, it's Taste, it's taste to Go, but we're working on um, beefing up the what people do do get in their taste to go bag. So um, if there are any suggestions from the community, people want to donate anything nifty, we're open to that. And also we have our, for, for Chris and Laura, we, we have our uh, photograph. Our, they're supposed to be here Thursday to get ready for yeah. For MEF in our blazer, in our blazer <laughs> colors. Um, yep. Yeah. So make sure you're here for that. And we do have room on our, our board um, for a few more people. So if people are listening and interested in our mission and have time to um, to donate their time and their expertise, we're, you know, we like to hear from you. So what is it, how does the MAF feel, feel about us? I mean, I, I feel like we're not taking enough advantage of them. They, they, they work their butts off to get all this money. They, you know, they basically said, tell us what you need, tell us what you need. And then we just don't go there. I mean, is there is there some way we can almost restart our relationship with the MEF or? There needs to be more grants. Uh, I mean, you know, a few years back, we used to review eight to 10 grants every cycle. And, and now it's- Yeah, we've had a few this year, but they've been, you know, I have to say, like, I really feel a, a, we were during the pandemic the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes people don't, I mean, they may, or organizations, groups, clubs, um, it happened this year, may may underestimate what, what they actually need. And and then we we feel bad because we granted that money. <laughs> and, about, yeah. to be honest with you. I think a lot of people just, you know, because you'll say that's a great opportunity for me. I forgot yeah. how to do that. 
Yeah. Well, that's and that's why I think happened yeah. here is you said this process. <laughs> I don't really. Know exactly, but basically, teachers submitted these things. There were certain rules about what could and couldn't be included, yeah. and then the superintendent, you know, gathered them all up and then submitted them. And I feel I and I, I haven't <laughs> thought about it being COVID, but it probably is where people just went. Let's see, I need hot spots. You yeah. know, that's basically all I need now. It was slow I mean, can, for about a year before COVID. Can we, I mean, how would we go about, or, and maybe this is some, something you talk to the MEF folks about. How can we sort of restart that process? Like tie in Caroline and Laura and, and make sure the teachers are well educated on it, what is and is not, you know, a grantable thing. Um, you know, um, Mrs. Burkhoff, she, mm -hmm. she was she, with MEF for a while, right? Well, she, she just, still, she just um, so she used to come at the beginning of the school year to like the opening <coughs> day, and she would just give like a five minute blurb and like a little heads up about mm -hmm. um, what grants can be written for, or sort of like what the parameters are named who the reps were for each of the buildings and then just explained like when the grant cycles, like you were saying, the grant cycle windows are or whatever yeah. in the fall and the spring. I don't know if that helped at all, but maybe it was like in the beginning of the school year, people are setting up their classrooms and they're like, oh. Now, one thing I did but was great at every single function, building <coughs> call me out, whether it be, a, you know, <laughs> fourth grade musical, yeah. you call me out and just come on up and say a few things. And, but at least it was good for, you know, just awareness yeah. for parents and everything else. That's, but I think it's very important for yeah. teachers just to let them know. Yeah, just a reminder. So yeah. maybe, I mean, maybe your next get together with the MEF, maybe you could just talk to them about how do we sort of restart this, get you guys in front of the teachers, get everybody excited about it, you know, how to use this stuff. Um, so okay. There's only a lot of teachers yeah. that haven't and, you know, if you look at our probably the last 10 or 15, you know, it's a trend and there are very important things that we that you get yeah. I should say. But um, I just think there's a lot of opportunity out there. And yeah. I wonder what, what are what new when, teachers and you know, yeah. yeah, why are the mm -hmm. grant dates when they are? Uh, I, I don't know because it's kind of been about a year since I've really been. I mean, at one point, they, they, they did the cycles based upon, they recently changed them. Though. Probably about a year and a half ago, they changed the cycle. Um, I have to talk to Christine. Well, I think so you're asking the question because they don't make sense. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I would never say that. But I'm just wondering if there's not a like different times of the year where people are more like, I need that. You know what I mean? And then it's like, oh, but I miss the end I remember, wasn't it wasn't like October and then March. March or February but, or March. Something like that. But before that, they used to be, now this is seven years ago, maybe. It was just a like, hey, I would like this, hey, I'd like that, hey, I'd like this. And they were just coming in whenever. And I I want to say Phil. I don't know. I want to say Phil said, look, I'll gather them all up and then in October. Again, now I'm making updates, but in October, I'll read through all these and take them to the MEF. So the MEF would get like two or three piles of them versus, yeah. you know, this constant. Plus you would filter what <coughs> should be paid for the yeah. school and what should, right. what, what's more involved. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's understandable. I'm just wondering if somebody's looking at something and they're like, well, I have to wait all the way till March. It's November. No, exactly. I have to figure something else out, you know? Well, we'll we, we should meeting. just if that if that needs to be redone, let's redo yeah. it. Yeah, I'll talk to you. We have a meeting, <laughs> so I'll definitely yeah. bring this up. Thank you. Well, remind everybody that well, the MEF is a very important uh, part of this district. It, uh, this is a school board meeting, not an MEF meeting. And uh, it's the business of the board of education. And well, the MEF can set up their own uh, outreaches and, and everything else. And so I have to be with so much discussion. I think it's more about 
you have all this money we're talking about do we get rid of 50 grand because and, and get rid of us uh, you know flagpole whatever thing is out there um there's other places we can get money we don't seem to be taking advantage of it yeah I, that, that's i don't just agree with power but for uh, for an organization that's given back 1.3 million dollars to the school district is pretty important i mean i would recommend having probably christina come in and just you know give a little spiel five mm -hmm. minutes so, you know or whoever that's a good I mean, idea. You, you could as well, and I'm just saying no, someone. No, no, I think no, that's great. To have the president come in. Right. Yeah. 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 Right. That, that would be yeah. good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right. Uh, PTO. Um, uh, yeah, I got a lot. I got a lot going on. Um, so they just did, sadly for me, they just did the Gertrude Hawk fundraiser. Um, but it, kind of along the lines with um, MEF, I was talking to Laura Donna about like either rebranding PTO to um, in the beginning of the year, like I, when my daughter was in kindergarten, I got something from home that said, do you want to join PTO and donate $30? Like they kind of recommend $30. I thought I had to join PTO and I've mentioned this at other meetings. So we're looking at a, a different way to communicate that to parents, that parents and I guess and staff can donate to PTO, um, but make it a little more user-friendly and that people don't think they actually have to join the PTO. Um, and it is on the website now. I don't know if it was before, I think it was. Um, so you can see what they have going on there. Um, because I also felt like PTO, there was a little, not a disconnect, but you know, you raised this money for virtual walk, what is, where did it go? What, what do we do with that? So. Um, she said it's on here. I can't find it right now, but I will for the next for the next meeting. Um, but they have like staff appreciation day, and this year they're going to include like the lunch workers, the custodial workers, and the bus drivers. Um, she said hopefully in May um, they'll do a, do a lunch. Um, staff they usually do a lunch in May, so they'll send um, a letter to families and ask for donations, which that's good. I think we need to kind of rebrand it. And, and get families a little more involved. Um, and more, I know you mentioned some of these things in, in your um, email that you sent. Um, there's something called Raise Craze. I think it's, I don't know what it is. It's somewhere, they're renaming it. So they're gonna have like an act, act of kindness week. So they're trying to do a non-monetary um, kind of like fundraiser um, where they're gonna have kids in the schools trying to do an act of kindness. It's gonna be the week of May 9th through the 13th. Um, so like the younger kids have, like random acts, random acts of kindness. Um, they're gonna like send this home to parents. So like if you know Catherine did folded the laundry, I can write that down and send it in. And you know if your kids do, so they're promoting it at home too. Um, and they'll also send um, like um, ideas of what to do. Like maybe we could do stuff in the community. Um, so the elementary schools will have certain things like that. And they're going to post like a tree in the school so that like each leaf would be like Chris made his bed and you know <laughs> Elliot helped a student cross the hall and you know so that and they'll see it like little kids love to you know see stuff like that um and they'll they'll so they're going to send paper copies home so that the parents can fill something out um so they're hoping that the principals and teachers are going to talk about that in that classes so it's it's nice that they're they're doing their fundraisers they have the Mother's Day flowers um they did the Gertrude Hawk. Um, and I think there might be one more for the end of the year, I'm not sure, but they've they've raised money that this year they're hoping that they're gonna be able to give out two scholarships. Um, they usually do like one for about a thousand dollars. They're hoping to do two. Um, and the Mother's Day Flowers, I think that was, is that to May 13th or April 13th? Uh, it's, on the, it's on the website. Um, they did make their uh, PTO Facebook public I know what that means. You probably do, um, but I know if you click on it on the website, you'll you'll go to um, a post about it. Um, and again, I will find out about the minutes because I think one of the things that they would really like, what I would really like to see as a liaison is, you know, we earned this much money and this is what it went to. Like we know it's going to staff appreciation now. They're including bus drivers and people like that. So um, the other thing they are going to try to do. During staff appreciation week, I don't know if I'm gonna get this away though. Um, it's called Chalk the Walk, 
where they're hoping on like the Sunday before they can get like the kids to come in and write something in chalk about like where their teachers can't be dirty. They're going to monitor that to make sure that it says something, but just, you know, just to promote, you know, with all that's going on to promote acts of kindness in all the schools um, and staff appreciation and to, to have them do something on chalk. Just pray that it doesn't rain the Sunday before. Um, and they, they do not report in August, I found out. So um, I think for the beginning of the school year, like I said, I'm really trying to help them or, or get them to somehow get something out to the parents at the beginning of the school year um, that says, we're asking for donation, but this is what it means. It doesn't mean you have to join PTO because I think that would, you know, maybe increase some of the funds and it's, you know, just a suggestion. So, um, but I like they're doing a couple more things that are non-monetary, non-chocolate, which helps me. They were also talking about um, possibly like MEF does the end of the year um, event, maybe doing something in the beginning of this yes. year around community, kindness, um, yeah. culture of care, um, just sort of as a kickoff as well. Yeah. Yep. She shared that. Yep. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. <laughs> right, any, other, any questions? Yeah. All right. Uh, suspension incident report is there for your uh, perusing. Um, my only question is a one comma two. What what is that? I, I, you probably explained this to me about thirty times. It's um because there were two students. If you look at that line, mm -hmm. there uh -huh. were two incidents and one student. Had one day, it's under the number of days, and the other one had two. Um, because they're in the same boat. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. All right. <coughs> uh, request for future agenda items. Other than we're moving um, basketball to next meeting. Yeah, thank you. And we just moved something else to the next meeting. Um, okay, anything else from anybody? Oh, just, I meant to ask when we were there in the um, enrollment. Does that include all of the um, staff enrollment? You know, we said, you know, staff, whether they live in the district or not, can bring their students in. Is uh, all of that in there? Because there was some yeah, talk about yeah. Are you getting pre-K? Huh? Yeah. The well, I was talking about it all, but pre-K was numbers. really what I was. Thinking. Those numbers um, include three okay. pre-K students, okay. um, but there are other students in process of registering for pre-K and also for kindergarten, and, staff or otherwise. Okay. All right. Now, I just want to make sure we hadn't I, I, that we were discussing it and then it was in and out. Anyway, okay. So nothing for future agendas right now. <coughs> Excuse me. I do want to get Jason um, to come in here, to come in specifically, talk about these new programs at BOSIS. Um, I don't know when we're going to do it, but I really want our parents to hear about the opportunities, especially these new ones with Toyota. Um, so one of these days, I'll actually talk to Jason about coming in. Uh, all right. Uh, next is executive session. We have a motion to go to executive session. Oh, before we do that, um, we may, something we discuss in executive session, we may have to take action when we come back, which modifies the agenda after executive session, just to let everybody know. Um, so do I have a motion? Do I have a second? All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. against? All right. uh, 10 minutes, Number break. Right. Um, yeah.